let me finish tonight with this. Earlier this week, a federal judge sitting in Florida dealt a major setback to Governor Rick Scott when she ruled that welfare recipients may not be subjected to mandatory drug testing. The case raises interesting privacy questions. The plaintiff was a man named Luis Lebron. He was deemed ineligible for benefits when he refused to undergo drug testing. The Navy vet, a father who lived with his disabled mother, said he'd never used illegal drugs. People who fail the test, they're disqualified for one year, but that can be cut to six months if they receive treatment for substance abuse. Well, U.S. District Judge Mary Scriven said the testing requirement amounts to an unreasonable search and seizure. A spokesperson for Governor Scott said that drug testing welfare recipients is a common sense way to ensure that welfare dollars are used appropriately. The drug testing policy, however, is backed by many Floridians. A Quinnipiac University poll last month showed that voters by a 71-27 percent margin favor the law. Since Florida's new law, testing welfare recipients took effect, and that was July 1, 7,030 passed. 32 failed, and 1,597 did not provide results. That's according to the Florida Department of Children and Families Records. The only other state to implement a similar drug testing policy, Michigan, had its law overturned in 2003 by a federal court. In her opinion, Judge Scriven relied on dicta, that's non-binding argument, that had been offered by the 11th Circuit. And here's what she wrote. If the state were allowed to randomly drug test any population of individuals by simply showing evidence of disproportionate drug use within that population, the state's exception would swallow the rule against warrantless, suspicionless drug testing. If a geographic population were shown statistically to have more prevalent drug use, would persons in the geographic footprint be subject to testing? If persons in an economic demographic could be shown to have a higher rate of drug use, would all such persons in that economic group be subjected to drug testing? Even if such suspicionless testing, as proposed by the state, were limited to those persons receiving state funds, would college students receiving governmental assistance to subsidize their education be subjected to random, suspicionless drug testing if it could be shown that drug use is demonstrably higher among college students? The Supreme Court's Fourth Amendment precedent would suggest not. Moreover, even if it were constitutionally palatable, no such showing of pervasive drug use among the Florida TAMF population has been made on this record. You know, I find it interesting that some who are otherwise quick to champion the Constitution aren't willing to defend the Fourth Amendment rights of welfare recipients. This judge, an appointee, by the way, of President George W. Bush, did just that. Her opinion is not only consistent with the very similar Michigan case on the same matter, but also uses the same logic, lack of individualized suspicion, that U.S. District Judge Richard Leon in Washington, D.C. used when he ruled that the NSA surveillance program is unconstitutional. I know this is difficult for politicians on both sides of the aisle, but you can't pick and choose which amendments you want to enforce, nor can you choose how you interpret any single amendment based on the underlying politics of a case.